Okay, so far we've been ignoring the resistive forces like air resistance, but when we include those, the amplitude of the oscillation is going to decrease exponentially with time like this. Okay, so what caused these forces? Well, it's the collision of the pendulum with the air particles. When the air particles and the pendulum collide, the air particles experience a force. For example, if in this case, if the pendulum is going towards the left, the air particles will be pushed out of the way towards the left. So the pendulum would experience an equal opposite force towards the right. So this is the displacement time graph of free oscillations, meaning there is no air resistance or resistive forces. But when we add some light damping, meaning some small resistive forces, not too much, then this is going to cause the amplitude to decrease exponentially. So we're going to have to add an exponential function on top like this, and we're going to have to confine our oscillations within that function. So time period hasn't changed, it's just the amplitude is decreasing over time. This dotted line that I added is called the exponential decay envelope, and it it's where the amplitude is proportional to e to the power of minus t, which is the exponential decay function. So the graph shows the displacement time graph of a mass on a spring, shows that the amplitude decreases exponentially. So exponential decay is a special type of decrease, and we can check for it by looking at the amplitude and how that's decreasing with time. So over one oscillation, which is be one increment of time, we can see here it's going from 5.2 to 2.5. So the factor of decrease there is times 0 0.48. Okay, if I repeat this again, so I'm going from uh, 2.5 to 1.2, so 1.2 divided by 2.5 is basically a multiple of times 0 0.48, so that's the same. And again, if we repeat this, we're roughly getting the same to one significant figure there anyway. So an exponential decay, we know, an exponential decrease, which we know this follows roughly, is when the y value decreases by a constant, not a constant amount, because you can see here it's not decreasing by a constant amount, is decreasing by a constant multiple over a same increment of time. And I didn't have to take one whole time period here. I could have taken two time periods or a fraction of a time period. As long as I'm taking the same x increment, the y value should decrease by the same factor, same multiple. Because so the damping force or the resistive force, like air resistance in this case, is not constant throughout the whole oscillation. It's maximum at a certain point. When the object is going through the equilibrium, that's when the frequency of collision with the air particles in this case is the greatest. So air resistance is biggest when it's going through the center because it's colliding with all the air particles and they're going to exert force on the pendulum. So at that point is where the work done against the air particles, the work done pushing them out of the way is the greatest. So the dissipation of energy is the greatest at the equilibrium. At either end, at the amplitude where it momentarily stops, where the velocity is zero, at that point, there's not going to be any air resistance because it's not, you're not moving through air. It's stationary at those points. So that's when the energy dissipated will be minimum. The part B of the same question here, this mass is replace one with a larger surface area, like so, okay, but the same mass. Add a new line to the displacement time graph to show the oscillations of the new object. Explain your answer. So if it's got a larger surface area, it's going to collide more frequently with air particles. So air resistance is going to be larger at the same speed. Okay, the time period or any nothing like that is going to change because it's still the same mass, it's still the same spring constant. So it's still going to oscillate with the same time period, but because there's more air resistance, the amplitude is going to decrease more. Okay, we could say it's a bit the damping is a bit heavier. Okay. So I'm going to draw this exponential decay curve like this, but I'm going to make sure the new one has a more rapid decay in the amplitude. Okay, so and also I want to make a couple of things similar. So I want to make sure the starting condition is the same, so it starts at the same speed. So the gradient at the beginning, I'm going to make sure that's the same size there. And I'm going to make sure the time period is the same, so I'm going to make sure it passes the x-axis uh, at the same point in time. And I'm going to confine this curve, new curve, within the uh, new exponential decay curve like this. So its amplitude is decreasing more quickly 